Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. At, um, finally, we are in the last day of this course. So we are going to end the module today. That is a very good uh, new. Vamos a terminar este módulo hoy. Hoy es la última sesión. So it's something very um, good for us because we are going to have some days to um, <clears throat> uh, a couple of days because we don't know uh, how much time do we have. At least we are going to have a couple of weeks to um, not be in a class. So we are going to have a little rest for the courses, but you are going to continue with your process in the next courses that you are going to take. And this is the first step. You are going to continue uh, creating your own um, future through this kind of activities because it is important for you that you have uh, this kind of knowledge. You know that it's very important now that we learn English to have a very opportunity for our work and also for our personal life. Así que eh, estos son diferentes pasos que nosotros eh, estamos dando, ¿verdad? Cuando aprendemos algo nuevo, en este caso es un idioma eh, nuevo. Así que ustedes sigan construyendo su camino, su futuro, ¿verdad? A través de este tipo de actividades que les van a servir mucho para eh, su trabajo, para su vida personal. And all of the things that you have to do in the future. So, yesterday we were seeing... Um, Oh, we were talking about the present continuous in which we were seeing some examples about um, the structure. Uh, we were like seeing uh, how to create statements with a uh, present continuous in positive and negative and also in questions. Um, also, we were seeing the different um, uses that we can give to the present continuous. And at the end, we were like solving the knowledge check that we have on the platform, that is the 5.10. Now we are going to see the last things that we are going to work on the platform in the um, section number five. And then we are going to see the exercises that you have on the midterm or the final exam. Vamos a terminar de ver las cosas o las actividades que teníamos en la plataforma. A estas alturas, yo creo que la mayoría ya terminó, si no es por decir que todos eh, ya terminaron con todas estas actividades. Solo vamos haciendo reviews de los temas, de las actividades, de los videos que tenemos en la plataforma y también vamos a hacer una revisión o un, eh, un review de el examen final. Esto es solo para que vayamos recordando verdad los temas que ya estuvimos trabajando durante este mes. It's incredible to think that we have um, to this day one month working on this um, activity. It's not like the whole thing because it is not like 28 days. But we have different weeks in which we were working on this platform. No son los 28 días, ¿verdad? Como sabemos del mes, sino que um, en este caso son 16 gestiones, pero sí requieren tiempo, ¿verdad? Y requieren de su tiempo porque sabemos que hay actividades durante el día, ¿verdad? Que se tienen que llevar a cabo y ustedes están dando una hora para completar lo que son sus actividades de la plataforma. So, we are going to see an, a video in which we are going to see a uh, word power activities. Vamos a ver algunas palabras que hablan de actividades, ¿verdad? ¿Cómo podemos expresar las actividades? In this case, we are going to talk about uh, different activities like um, different sports or um, other activities that we can make to having fun, to relax, or something like that. Vamos a ver el video, ¿verdad? Para ir hablando un poco sobre eh, los datos que aparecen en él, cosas importantes. Vamos a ir haciendo reviews de los videos y luego vamos a pasar con las knowledge check. Vamos a ver el primero. That is, he's playing tennis. Que tiene que ver, ¿verdad? Con el uso también de el present continuous. 
So this is the video and we are going to watch what is the information because you know that um, we have this image in which we have different activities that we can perform. We have his playing tennis. Uh, so we have play tennis, ride a bike, run, swim, take a walk, dance, drive, go to the movies, shop, read, study, and watch television. So in this case, it is not uh, just related to sports. It is also related to daily activities that we perform during the day. Aquí hay eh, deportes y en otros casos también hay actividades que se pueden llevar a cabo durante el día a día. So we are going to listen. What is this about? So let's go. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll become familiar with vocabulary in order to express activities. Let's start by listening and repeating. He's playing tennis. He's riding a bike. She's running. He's swimming. She's taking a walk. They're dancing. She's driving. They're going to the movies. He's shopping. She's reading. She's studying. He's watching television. Now, your task is to describe the actions from the pictures and form statements in the present continuous. For example, he's playing tennis. She's riding a bike. You should get creative and change the he or she for the names of people that you know. For example, Mike is playing tennis. Mary is uh, riding a bike. After you complete this exercise, please share your work in our discussion forums. Okay, it's the same thing that we were like uh, learning yesterday. Aquí simplemente nos está diciendo cómo podemos hacer nosotros para crear esas oraciones, para poder expresar eh, las cosas que hacemos durante el día. Ahí teníamos los ejemplos, ¿verdad?, de algunas actividades y tenemos algunos ejemplos también de oraciones que incluso nosotros ya veíamos eh, más ejemplos en el documento. Vamos a ver los completos. Let me see. Here. Ahí tenemos los cuatro ejemplos, ¿verdad? He is playing tennis. She is riding a bike. Mike is playing tennis and Mary is riding a bike. En este caso, lo que vamos a hacer nosotros solo es utilizar nuestros pronouns and then we are going to use the verb to be. And in this case, it is necessary that we use the verb to be because we are using the present um, form, the present uh, tense. So in this case, we are using the verb to be, and then we are going to use the verb, but uh, in that case, we are going to use the verb with the ing form that is telling you that you are talking about something that is happening in this precise moment. But also you can see on the document that we have different uh, things in which we can use the present continuous. Ya en el video teníamos eh, los diferentes tipos de eh, formas en las que podíamos utilizar el presente continuo, no solo para hablar de cosas del de momento, también para cosas del futuro, pero no como algo muy lejano, sino como algo que ya sabemos que va a suceder. Um, then we are going to see some of the, the activities that we have here on the image. That is the first one, he or she or I am. Porque esa misma actividad, esa misma frase la podemos utilizar con todos los pronombres. En este caso, lo único que vamos a aplicar es el verbo to be, que es lo diferente. Pero el verbo en sí no va a cambiar de forma con la tercera persona singular. Sino que eh, todos los verbos van a ir con ing. 
Y el verbo to be es el único que va a cambiar, ¿verdad? I am, he is, she is, um, it is, uh, we are, you are, they are, and the verb to be, I mean, the verb with the ing form. For example, he is playing tennis. I am playing tennis. You are playing tennis. Yeah, she is playing tennis. We are playing tennis. It's the same thing. En este caso, ¿verdad? El verbo con el ing no va a cambiar de estructura. Simplemente ing and that's it. So, en, en este caso, it's like writing exercises or examples with simple present, but adding ing to the verb. Es casi lo mismo. Lo único que vamos a hacer es agregarle el ing a nuestro verbo. Es como tener una oración en presente simple. The next one. Uh, we have the following words. Here, I'm going to make it like this. Riding a bike. I am riding a bike. You are riding a bike. He is riding a bike. And all the pronouns that you have. I am running, you are running, he is running, she is running. And we can add a complement. Podemos agregarle un complemento como ya lo veíamos también. I am running in the park. Estoy corriendo en el parque. She is running on the beach. Ella está corriendo en la playa. Siguiente, I am swimming. You are swimming, he is swimming. The same thing, just adding ing to the end of the verb. That is the action verbs. So we are going to see the knowledge check 5.13. Vamos a ver el 5.13. So what is Mary doing? Wait. So in this case, we need to listen a uh, audio program in which we're going to listen what is she doing. But in this case, it's like a sound, a very specific sound in which you have to um, decide what is the activity that she is performing. ¿Qué está haciendo Mary? En este caso solo tenemos el sonido, but I, I need to move because it is not working in that uh, space, in this case for me. But we are going to listen sounds. Vamos a escuchar sonidos y vamos a responder cada uno de los numerales. So, in this case, let's listen what are the sounds. Answer questions about each sound. One. Two. Three. Four. Evans prison. Come see. Next Wednesday night. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Okay, we have different sounds, very specific sounds uh, that we can make an idea, that we can think about the activities that this person is doing during the day. So in the in this case, vamos a responder. 
¿Qué estaba haciendo en el primer sonido? ¿A qué se refiere el primer sonido? Let's see, I have an answer. Driving. She is driving. Okay. Um, second sound. ¿A qué se refiere el segundo sonido? ¿De qué era el segundo sonido? She's swimming. Swimming. She is swimming. Okay. Number three. ¿A qué se refería el, el tercer sonido? ¿De qué era? She's sitting. Is what? Eating. Eating. Yes. Okay. She is eating. Number four. Número cuatro. Watching TV. She's watching TV. Okay, she's watching TV. We're going to see for the, the periods. Vamos a ver si funciona con todos los puntos, ¿verdad? Number five. Número cinco. Dancing. What? Dancing. Dancing, okay. She is dancing. Number six. Número seis. She's riding a bike. She is riding a bike. Number seven, numero siete. Playing tennis. Playing tennis. And the last one, a qué corresponde el último sonido? <coughs> Typing. Typing. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Vamos a ver. Vamos a ver si me acepta todos los puntos. Ok. Todas están correctas. Very good. Excellent. You have a good ear. Or you are good listening. Muy bien. Aquí tenemos nuestras respuestas. Muy buenas. Escuchando y recordando, ¿verdad? Los sonidos que aparecen en el audio. En el primero, she is driving. Ella está manejando. En el segundo, she is swimming. Está nadando. En el tercero, she is eating, está en un restaurante, ¿verdad? Se escucha como que está en un restaurante, so she is eating, está comiendo. For sound, she is watching television, ella está viendo la televisión. Next one, she is dancing, se escucha como que está en una fiesta, así que ella está bailando. Um, next one, she is riding a bike, se escucha, ¿verdad? Lo de la bicicleta, así que ella está montando una bicicleta. Um, next one, she's playing tennis. Se escucha también el sonido de los tenis, del golpe de la pelota. So, ella está jugando tenis. And the last one, she's typing. Se escucha como una máquina de escribir, ¿verdad? Se escucha el sonido. So, ella está escribiendo en un dispositivo. So, in the last one, we have like this article. Es un artículo donde tenemos que leer, ¿verdad? La información que se nos presenta. Eh, vamos a escuchar y a leer, ¿verdad? Vamos a, a, a ver si se escucha el audio. Reading. Yes. We'll... Friends across a continent. Vamos a, a escuchar la conversación mientras podemos ir leyendo la verdad en, el, en el, la imagen. Y ya luego vamos a ir discutiendo un poco sobre a qué se refiere esto. So let's listen. Meg Martin and Kathy O'Brien chat online almost every day. Meg is an exchange student from the U.S. She is studying in Mexico. Kathy is in the U.S. Hi there. 
Hi, Meg. What are you doing? I'm sitting on my bed with my laptop computer. I'm doing my homework. What are you working on? I'm writing an essay for Spanish class. Can you chat? For a minute. Where are you? I'm in an internet cafe with my friend Carmen. I'm having coffee and she's reading a magazine. How is your family? They're all fine. My father's working outside. He's mowing the lawn. My mother is out shopping. Where's your brother? John's not home. He's playing soccer in the park. Oh, wait. My mother is home. She's calling me. I have to go. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay, this is the conversation that they are having. So we have two girls that are eh, apart, están lejos, ¿verdad? Meg Martin and Kerry O'Brien chat online almost every day. Meg is an exchange student from the U.S. She is studying in Mexico and Kerry is in the U.S. Ambas son de Estados Unidos, pero en este momento están en diferentes países. Um, Megan o Meg está en México y Katie está en Estados Unidos. Ellas eh, hablan, ¿verdad? Constantemente en este caso es a través de mensajes. So we can listen the conversation and they are asking what are they doing, qué están haciendo, ¿verdad? Durante ese momento en el que están ellas eh, hablando. Um, pues Katie está en su cama con su computadora y está haciendo una tarea. Y le pregunta a Megan o Meg qué es lo que está haciendo, en qué trabaja. Y Katie le dice que está escribiendo un ensayo para su clase de español. So she's working on a Spanish class, um, being someone that is speaking English. En este caso, pues obviamente, ¿verdad? Y que es una persona que habla inglés, está trabajando en algo eh, relacionado con el español. Um, Meg asking, can you chat? Meg le pregunta si puede estar eh, chateando, ¿verdad? Escribiendo mensajes mientras hace una tarea. En Katie said, for a minute, where are you? ¿Dónde estás tú? Y Meg le dice, I am in an internet cafe with my friend Carmen. I am having coffee and she's reading a magazine. How is your family? Meg está en un, en un ciber, ¿verdad? En un cibercafé. Eh, pero en este caso es, no es un cibercafé como tal, sino que es como una cafetería con eh, computadoras y todo eso. Porque ella está tomándose un café y su amiga Carmen está leyendo una revista. Luego le pregunta por su familia. They are all fine. My father is working outside. He's mowing the lawn. My mother is out shopping. Como um, Meg les está preguntando sobre la familia, pues ella le explica o le hace como una, um, le da como información breve de qué es lo que hacen eh, los padres. En este caso no están trabajando como tal, eh, un trabajo de oficina o algo por el estilo, sino que le dice que el padre está afuera cortando el césped, mowing the lawn, y la mamá está afuera de casa, pero anda comprando, o sea, se fue de shopping. And it, eh, Meg asking, what is your brother? ¿Dónde está tu hermano? Y le dice, John is not home, he's playing soccer in the park. Oh, wait, my mother is home. She's calling me. I have to go. 
John no está en la casa, está jugando fútbol en el parque, eh, pero en ese momento llega la mamá de Katie y la estaba llamando, así que tuvo que dejar la conversación con eh, Meg. So Meg se despide, and that is the conversation that we have um, between these two girls that are in a different country at the moment. They are uh, good friends and they like to uh, talk about their lives uh, every single day. So they have that kind of activities. And throughout the last years, like 15 years or, or more, I don't know, 20, 20, 15, almost. Um, Talking through chat is one of the most um, like, I don't know if it is important or most um, effective way to talk with other people uh, because um, we can find that uh, many people like to do that activity. Uh, they have a, a very specific time in, the, in which they like to, uh, being on the cell phone, be on the computer, on different devices, um, writing and uh, talking with their friends. Um, but in some cases, they don't like to making calls. They just like to write through messages because it is easy for them to express their feelings. So it is not something that is kind of new. It's something that is um, that happened a lot of time ago. Es bastante común, ¿verdad? Ver ahora que las personas prefieren hablar por mensajes que por llamadas. Y es lo mismo, esto viene de hace un par de años atrás, donde se empezó a ver su auge, ¿verdad? De la mensajería en línea. Más que todo ahora con las redes sociales que ya nos permiten enviar mensajes sin necesidad de, eh, de ponerle como recargar nuestros teléfonos con saldo, sino que ya es parte del de internet, ¿verdad? Del Wi-Fi. In this case, we can see an advantage of the um, the communication through the social media because we can talk with people that is um, outside the country and we can make that a effective communication with them because we are going to have a conversation, a whole conversation with a person. And it, and it is not necessary that we are like face to face that in this case, we are, because I am in a place and you are in another different places, but we are having a class, a conversation or something like that through the screen of our devices. Entonces, es una ventaja bastante grande de las redes sociales y de los dispositivos, ¿verdad? Eh, electrónicos en este caso, porque nos permiten mantener conversación con personas que no están en nuestro mismo espacio físico, así como nosotros, que en este caso no estamos eh, cerca, sino que estamos bastante lejos, pero estamos teniendo ese tipo de conversación, ¿verdad? So, what is the point of this activity? Is to make the last um, knowledge check, that is the uh, 5.16, es el último knowledge check de la sección número 5. So we have six different um, questions and we are going to choose the best option. Vamos a escoger la opción correcta y vamos a terminar con la sección cinco para ir al midterm, para hacer el review del midterm. So who is writing an essay? ¿Quién está escribiendo el ensayo? Katie or Meg? Katie. Katie O'Brien, okay. Who is having coffee? ¿Quién está tomándose el café? Katie O'Brien, John O'Brien, Katie's mother, Meg Martin, Katie's father, or Meg Carmen? Martin. Meg Martin, very good. Who is reading a magazine? ¿Quién lee la revista? Who? Carmen. Okay, Carmen. Who is working outside? ¿Quién está eh, trabajando afuera? Katie's father. Ah, very good. Katie's father. 
Who is shopping? ¿Quién está de compras? Katie's mother. Katie's mother. Very good. And who is playing soccer? John. John O'Brien. So, that's right. We have all the um, answers correct. Aquí están todas las respuestas, ¿verdad? Bueno, continuamos y ahora ya terminamos la sección 5. Solo nos queda revisar lo que es el examen. Vamos a ver de qué trata el examen. We are charging and we have six, six parts. Solo tenemos seis partes, ¿verdad? Say partes diferentes, it is not that long, it's kind of short, but we are going to see. So we have in the first part, we have a listening, in which we are going to listen the conversation and select the correct answers. Vamos a escuchar el audio, vamos a discutir un poco sobre él, luego damos las respuestas para los que no hayan completado el examen final. Tiene su oportunidad, si usted quiere, puede ir anotando, tomando sus anotaciones de las respuestas o... Incluso puede ir contestando en este preciso momento, ¿verdad? Sus respuestas. Solo para los que se hayan atrasado los demás. Si ya terminaron, solo es un pequeño review. So, we are going to listen the conversation. Vamos a escuchar la conversación. And we are going to say the answers. Listen to the conversations. Check the correct answers. One. Your name is interesting, Justine. Are you French? No, I'm not. Are you Italian? No, I'm Canadian. You're from Canada? Yes. My family is from Montreal originally. Two. Where's Mike? Uh, Mike? I don't know him. He's my friend from school. He's a little quiet. Oh, is he serious? Actually, no, he's not. He's very funny. Three. Wow, it's really warm today. Yes, it sure is. And it's sunny, too. No, it's not. Look, it's raining. Oh, oh well. Four. Hey, Sue. How are you? Great, Phil. How about you? I'm okay. Hey, you look great. That's a nice suit. Thanks. It's new. Um, where's Ms. Collins? Uh, she's right over there. She's wearing a blue dress. Oh, I see her. Thanks. Okay, we are going to, um, we are going to divide the conversation. We are going to listen to the first part. And then we are going to um, explain something. Listen to the conversations. Check the correct answers. One. Your name is interesting, Justine. Are you French? No, I'm not. Are you Italian? No, I'm Canadian. You're from Canada? Yes. My family is from Montreal originally. Okay, in the first one, we have two people that is talking about the, um, the, the country. Están hablando de los países, ¿verdad? De donde puede provenir una de las personas que habla y sale al final que es de Canadá y que es de Montreal. Porque él pensaba que era de otros países, ¿verdad? En ese caso están hablando de las nacionalidades de los diferentes países de donde podría ella ser, pero al final is the Canada. Next one. Two. Where's Mike? Uh, Mike? I don't know him. He's my friend from school. He's a little quiet. Oh, is he serious? Actually, no, he's not. He's very funny. 
Luego en ese están hablando del amigo, ¿verdad? Ella pregunta por su amigo, él dice que no lo conoce, ella le dice que es su amigo de la escuela, y él le pregunta que cómo es, que estamos hablando de personalidad, ¿verdad? Y le dice, ¿él es serio? No, él es bastante divertido. Estamos hablando también de adjetivos donde estamos describiendo a las personas, son temas que ya hemos visto con anterioridad, sobre eh, describir la personalidad y no solo el físico de las personas. Three. Wow, it's really warm today. Yes, it sure is. And it's sunny too. No, it's not. Look, it's raining. Oh, oh well. En este estamos hablando del clima, ¿verdad? Y de diferentes palabras que podemos utilizar para referirnos al clima. It's kind of contradictory because um, they are saying like it's very warm. Está bastante caliente. It is not hot. No es caluroso, no es, sino que es como eh, bastante tibio. No caliente como tal, porque ahí sería hot. Sino que dice it's warm. Es tibio, hace un poco de calor. Y le dice que está soleado. It's sunny. But she is saying, no, it's not. Look, it's raining. Está lloviendo. It's kind of, um, I don't like that kind of uh, weather. Because um, it's warm and it is like raining and you feel like sticky. Eh, cuando están esos climas así, que está tibio, ¿verdad? No, no caliente, sino que eh, se siente un poco caluroso, pero no como cuando estamos en verano. Y llueve, uno se siente, no sé, como un poco pegajoso el ambiente. And I don't like that. It's one of the worst uh, weather that it can be. I don't like that kind of weather. It is like very, I don't know, ugly, we can say. It's not sounding. Oh, wow. Let's see. No, it is not working. Let me go if I can. The last one, because it's almost the last one. Mm -hmm. It is. And it's sunny, too. No. Too. How are you? Great, no, Phil. this one. Oh. Oh, well. Four. Hey, Sue. How are you? Great, Phil. How about you? I'm okay. Hey, you look great. That's a nice suit. Thanks. It's new. Um, where's Ms. Collins? Uh, she's right over there. She's wearing a blue dress. Oh, I see her. Thanks. Okay, in, the, in this last one, uh, we are talking about clothes. Aquí estamos hablando de ropa, ¿verdad? Diferentes eh, prendas que podemos utilizar. She's wearing a suit. Ella está utilizando un traje completo. And the other girl eh, or the other eh, woman is using a blue dress. Están utilizando un vestido azul. Aquí tenemos pieza, ¿verdad? Del tema de clothes, de la ropa. So let's see what are the um, questions that we have here. What is Justine from? De donde es Justine? From Canada, France, or Italy? Canada. Okay, she's from Canada. What is Mike like? Como es Mike? He's very warm and sunny, a little quiet but very funny. Little quiet and very serious. Es tibio y soleado. Tranquilo, pero divertido. Eh, tranquilo, pero muy serio. He's a little quiet, but very fun. Very good. What is the weather like? Warm and sunny. Raining, but it is warm. Sunny, but it is cold. Es tibio y soleado. Está lloviendo, pero es tibio. Está soleado, pero es frío. It's raining, but it's warm. Okay. Is Sue wearing a blue dress? Sue está utilizando un vestido azul. Yes, she is. No, she is not. 
she is wearing a swimsuit. Oh, no, she is not. She's wearing a suit. Sí, ella está utilizando un vestido. No, ella no está utilizando un vestido, está utilizando un traje de baño. O no, ella no está utilizando un vestido, sino un traje. The last one. The last one. Okay, she is wearing a suit. Excellent. Muy bien. Next one. Then write the questions. Vamos a escribir las preguntas. To be able to work on this exercise, you need to read the answers first. Based on the answer, you may type your question. Do not forget to add a question mark at the end. Aquí tenemos que basarnos en las respuestas para poder escribir una pregunta. Um, vamos a ver de qué trata esto. Tenemos el ejemplo. What is your name? My name is Tim. Are your parents in Peru? No, they are not in Peru. They are in Canada. Ahora, tenemos la respuesta de la literal A. No, they are from England. No, they are not from England. They are from Australia. No, ellos no son de Inglaterra, son de Australia. ¿Cuál es la pregunta para esa respuesta? Oh, yes. Are they from England? Okay, are they from England? Okay, number two. We are from New York. Somos de Nueva York. ¿Cuál es la pregunta para esa respuesta? Okay, we have an answer here. Okay. They are talking about uh, the place. Is that almost correct? La respuesta es, la pregunta está, vamos a arreglarla. Where are they from? Tendría que ser, ¿no? Where are they from? I mean, yes. O en este caso, where are you from? Porque estamos respondiendo con we. Where are you from? ¿De dónde eres? We are from New York. Aquí sí utilizamos la WH word. Número tres. I think she is 22. Yo creo que tiene 22. What is the question? How old is she? Number four. No, my first language is in Spanish. It is Portuguese. No, mi primer lengua, mi primer idioma no es el español, es el portugués. What is the question? I don't know, but I think that for the answer, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe, uh, what is your first language? Your okay. first language? Are you first language? Ah, puede ser. Vamos a probar con esa última. Are Spanish your first language? Vamos a ver si esa es la respuesta. Are, I mean, is Spanish, is Spanish your First language. Yes, I need to do it in capital, I think. Number five. Yes, I am Japanese. I am from Tokyo. Sí, soy japonés de Tokyo. ¿Cuál podría ser la, la pregunta? Are you Japanese? Are you Japanese? Okay, vamos a ver. 
Vamos a ver cuáles nos salieron buenas y cuáles nos salieron malas. Ok, no es, um, is Spanish your first language? ¿Cuál sería la pregunta entonces? Si no es el español tu primer idioma. Alguien que tenga una idea de cuál podría ser la pregunta de la eh, número cuatro. Is your first language Spanish? Vamos a cambiar entonces. Is your first language Spanish? Vamos a ver. Será, será, será. Very good. Ahí está. Is your first language Spanish? Es tu primer idioma el español. Solo necesitábamos cambiar eso. Very good. Thank you. Ahí están nuestras preguntas. Número uno, are they from England? Número dos, where are you from? Número tres, how old is she? Número cuatro, is your first language Spanish? And number five, are you Japanese? Un par de segundos para que los que no han, no han eh, terminado el examen lo puedan ir resolviendo. Y luego continuamos con la siguiente parte. Okay, next one. Choose the correct adjective to complete the sentence. Adjetivos correctos, ¿verdad? Necesitamos los adjetivos que correspondan a cada una de las situaciones. Ahora, vamos a ver. Tenemos cuatro. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see if I can do it a little bit. Like this. Tenemos aquí tres, nos faltaría uno. Larry isn't serious. He is. Jean is a really good student. She's very. And my teacher isn't short. She is. Y el último. My brother is good looking. He is. Les voy a dar un par de minutos, ya me van a dar las respuestas, don't worry, no se preocupen, solo pensamos un momento o analizamos o recordamos nuestra respuesta, a couple of minutes, dos minutos, tres minutos, lo más, y damos la respuesta.
Ok, let's see. Vamos a ver cuáles son las respuestas. Larry isn't serious. Larry no es serio. Él es heavy, pesado, funny, divertido, pretty, bonito. Funny. Funny, funny. very good. Funny. Very good, excellent. Número dos. Jean is a really good student. Jean es un muy buen estudiante. Uh, en este caso, ella es una muy buena estudiante. She is very, ella es bastante friendly, amigable, cien, delgada, smart, inteligente. She is a smart. Smart. Very good, smart. Next one. My teacher is in short. Mi profesor o profesora no es pequeño eh, o pequeña. She is, ella es, tall, alta, heavy, pesada, pretty, bonita. She is tall. She is tall. Very good. My brother is good looking. Mi hermano es, tiene como una buena imagen. He is handsome, guapo, interesting, interesante, pretty, bonito. Handsome. Handsome, very good. Excelente, ahí están nuestras respuestas. Número uno, funny. Número dos, smart. Número tres, tall. Número cuatro, handsome. Very good. Next one. Choose the correct answer to the question. Vamos a escoger la respuesta a la pregunta. Tenemos, is this Sue's scarf? Es esta la eh, bufanda de Sue. Maybe they are Katie's. Tal vez son los de Katy. No, it is not hers. It's mine. No es de ella. Es mío. Yes, yes they are hers. Sí, esos son de ella. ¿Cuál es la respuesta correcta? Uno, dos o tres. The second one. Ok. Número dos. Whose boots are these? ¿De quiénes son estas botas? Y tenemos las opciones. Maybe they are Katie's. Tal vez son de, de, de Katie. No, it is not hers. It is mine. Que es la que ya habíamos respondido. Que es mía. Y la última. Yes, they are hers. ¿Cuál es la respuesta correcta? Uno o tres. The first. The first one. Ok. Número tres. Are these Lisa's gloves? Son los eh, guantes de Lisa. Maybe que son los de, Ka los de Katie. No, no son de ella, son míos. O sí son de ella. Número uno, dos o tres. The last one. The last one, very good. Ahora vamos con las últimas dos. Whose hat is this? ¿De quién es este, este sombrero o este gorro? Maybe they are Katie's. Son de Katy. Um, no, no es de ella, es mío. O yo creo que es tuyo. The last one. I did. The last one. I think it's yours. And it says, are these Peter's and Katie's coats? Son los abrigos de Peter y de Katie. Y tenemos las opciones. No, they aren't theirs. They are ours. No, no son de ellos. Son de nosotros. Maybe they are Katie's. Tal vez son de, Ka de Katie. No, it is not hers. It's mine. No es de ella, es mío. O yo pienso que son tuyos. Uno, dos, tres o cuatro. The first one. The first one. Very good. And excelente. Todas están correctas. Very good. We are almost done. Estamos casi terminando el tiempo y el examen, ¿verdad? Así que vamos a ver las últimas dos partes para ya terminar esta sesión y este curso. Dice, is the correct present continuous form of the verb. Vamos a usar el, eh, la forma correcta del verbo utilizando el presente continuo. Are you wearing jeans? 
Y la respuesta. It said, no, I wearing a suit. No, I am wearing a suit. O no, I am wears a suit. ¿Cuál es la respuesta correcta? Uno, dos o tres. Number two. Number two. Llevamos el verbo to be y el verbo con ing. Very good. Is Mr. Sims wearing a tie? No, he's wearing a tie. No, I am not wearing a tie. Oh, no, he isn't wearing a tie. No, he isn't wearing a tie. Oh, very good. Are Ed and Sue wearing sweaters? Están Ed y Sue utilizando suéteres. En este caso tenemos yes. He is wearing sweaters. No, they are not. It's very hot. No, they are wearing sweaters. The second one. The second one. And the last one. It is raining. Yes, it is rain. No, it's, it's not raining. It's snowing. Oh, no, it's raining not. The second one, and let's see. Very good, excellent. Muy bien. Ahora la última para, I, I mean, it, I, know, I don't know if uh, the second part. Let's see. No, it is the last one. So in this last one, we have select the correct time. Vamos a seleccionar el tiempo correcto. Look at the, these clocks and select the two possible correct answers for the hours display on each watch. Vamos a observar los relojes y seleccionar las dos posibles respuestas que son correctas, obviamente, según la hora que se muestra en el reloj. En el ejemplo del reloj 1, what time is it? It's 20 after 2 and it's 2.20. Son eh, 20 para las dos. O son las 2 y 20. O, oh, I mean, son eh, 20 pasadas las 2 y las 2 y 20. Luego, tenemos acá nuestros relojes, que son 3. In the first one, what time is it? It's 10 to 7. It's 10.35. It's 6.50. Or it's 25 to 11. It's 10 to 7 and it's 6 Is It's 6. I the mean, can one, you. It's 10, uh, uh, it's 10 to 7 and the second one? Yes. And uh, it's 6 650. 6 okay. Yes. Next one, number two. What time is it? It's 9 45. It's 8 45. It's a quarter to 10. And it's a quarter to nine. It's eight forty-five. Uh huh. It's a quarter to nine. Okay. And the last one. It's five past eleven. It's eleven o five. It's twelve fifty-five, or it's five to one. It's five past eleven. Uh huh. It's eleven o five. Eleven o five. Okay. Okay. Vamos a revisar. And correct. All of them are correct. Very good. Excelente. Ahí están nuestras respuestas para el la parte de el reloj y del tiempo. Good. So. This is the last part, and we complete all the work on the platform. Esta era la última parte. Era el examen final para terminar con lo que es el curso. So I just want to thank you for your time. And uh, um, I hope that you are having a good um, 
process and you are having fun with your work and all of the things that you are doing and also that you find the things that you want to do in the future for your life. Así que gracias por su tiempo. Eh, it was amazing. Eh, espero que sigan adelante con sus demás cursos. Así que nos vamos a despedir aquí y ustedes eh, ya completaron lo que son sus actividades. So, thank you for your time and we are going to see someday. So, Teacher, goodbye. Una, eh, one question. Tell me. Eh, eh, bueno, en español se lo voy a Para el siguiente eh, curso, ¿usted estaría impartiendo la misma sesión o no? No, lo más seguro es que no. De acuerdo. Gracias. Bueno, gracias a ustedes. See you. Sí, sí. Adiós. Adiós. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye, you. teacher. Thanks to you. Goodbye. Teacher, sorry, I have, I have a question. Tell me. When does the next module start? You know. Um, it could be in a month. Lo más seguro es que en un mes. Uh, the module two? Yes, the module two, it could be in a month. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome.